Hi, so today is April 2nd, 2021. Uh, I'm here in Krakow in Poland and it's Good Friday. Um, so I'm feeling a little inspired. I'm not a great religious guy myself, but uh, Polish being, Poland being a very religious country and churches all over Krakow. It's nice to be here over Easter time. And I thought I'd start with the story of well, the connection of Pope John Paul II to to crack off. So close to my home is uh, an area called Skauka um, and it's a religious site where a monastery and a church was built on um, a small area of rock by the river but it's well known here uh, because uh, the patron saint of Poland, Saint Stanislaw, uh, was apparently he was assassinated here um, in the 11th century and there's a, a, a huge significance to this site because of that. And it was particularly important to Pope John Paul II, who uh, had a great appreciation for this saint. So within this area of Skauka is uh, one of the many monuments to him, but this is one of the most well-known ones. Many of you might remember, before he took the name John Paul II, uh, his, his name was Carol Wautiwa. Um, so on the anniversary, the 16th anniversary of his death today, uh, it's a, and being Good Friday, it's a good day to come and pay respects to him. John Paul II was a, a beloved Pope, um, not least because he was the first non-Italian Pope in 400 years. And the fact that he came from, from Poland made him, made him a huge hero in Poland. Although now I understand in, in more recent times, um, I've heard from several people that it's, this kind of popularity has waned a little bit um, because of some of the controversy in the Catholic Church around the sex scandals and the, the time when Pope John Paul II, you know, there were apparently some cover-ups. Um, so that's tainted his reputation a little bit in the, in the past several years, but still... You know, you can't tell the story of Krakow without seeing monuments and references to John Paul II everywhere. Even the airport here uh, is John Paul II Airport. Um, so today I'm trying to cover uh, not all of the sites that are connected to him, but five or six places um, that are either a monument to him or have an a important connection to him. So outside the church is an open-air altar. It's called the Altar of the Three millennium and there are seven statues here of um, I think six of these are saints all uh, connected with Poland from throughout the centuries and one one of the columns and the monuments is for of course Pope John Paul II so this is a modern outdoor altar and the significance of it is uh, every May the 8th, there's a procession to this site from Wawel Castle uh, to Skauka. The procession has been held for centuries, ending, ending in a mass here nowadays at this open air altar. And this was particularly uh, important for John Paul II. And he really um, you know, put great significance to this procession. So, Pope John Paul, we'll, uh, we'll see you in Wawel Castle next. So here we are on the second stop of our visit of places in Krakow, uh, connected to Pope John Paul II. So we're here in the famous Wawel Castle. And the Wawel Castle, it's a bit like the, the Kremlin in that it's uh, within the walls of the castle. There are many different buildings, uh, one of which is a cathedral. Uh, so this is Wawel Cathedral and very relevant for the story of John Paul II. He took his first mass here uh, in 1946 as a young priest in a crypt within the church. Uh, in 1964, he became bishop and was inaugurated uh, here also uh, as Bishop of Krakow. And then three years later, uh, he became Cardinal, also inaugurated in this place within within the church. Uh, so such was the importance of this place to him. He visited it, I think, sort of eight or nine times 
after he became Pope during his papacy. Okay, so now we're around at the, uh, the other side of the cathedral. It's got the famous clock tower that you can see as you walk around. And we're getting close to five o'clock, so we might hear the chimes. It's such a shame that it's closed. Uh, I will definitely come back and do a video inside one day because it's spectacular inside. But since we're telling the story of John Paul II today, uh, a number of statues of the man around the city, but this is one of the most famous ones. Uh, we're very close to the, the cathedral. Um, and you know, I don't know if the flowers are there all the time. As I mentioned earlier, it's the anniversary of his death. Uh, but here's, here's the great man. This is the third step on our tour of Krakow from places connected with John Paul II. This is Kanonicza Street and it's in the old town just under the shadow of Wawel Castle and Wawel Cathedral. And at the edge of the street here in buildings number 19 and 21, uh, Karol Wojtyla, the future Pope John Paul II, lived here twice. Initially he lived here as a priest in somewhat modest accommodation and then when he became bishop uh, he lived here again and apparently his uh, apartment was much much nicer uh, at that time so though it's a museum dedicated to his life now and they've kept the apartment as it was when he lived here it's got some of his possessions there um, it's an absolute must see if you uh, come to Krakow and you want to know more about Pope John Paul II So as we exit Kanonicza Street, uh, we see in front of us now the, one of the most beautiful churches, in my opinion, in Krakow, uh, right in the old town. It's the Catholic Church of St. Peter and Paul, and relevant to John Paul II because his parents were married here. It really is the most beautiful church with the, the statues outside. And here he is again. Everywhere you go in Krakow, you don't have to walk very far before you find something connected to Pope John Paul II. Okay, so let me read what it says here. It says, on February 10th, 1906, parents of the Holy Father John Paul II, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wojtyla, contracted the sacrament of marriage in this church. As I mentioned earlier, today is the 16th anniversary of the passing of Pope John Paul II, so uh, some memorial candles marked out here in his honor today. Right opposite over the road here is the Bishop's Palace, which is the second biggest palace in Krakow after Volvo. And where you see the window with the mural for him, this is the, the papal window, where he used to address the crowds in Krakow when he visited as Pope. You can't actually go in the, the palace itself, it's off limits, but you can enter the courtyard. And within the courtyard, there's a monument, again, another monument to Pope John Paul II, uh, which was the first one that was built for him. So he lived here as a Cardinal and again, candles and tributes because it's the anniversary of his passing. So it's uh, April 3rd now, uh, following day, and uh, here we are in Park Szeletski in uh, the Lubix part of Krakow. And this is another one of the better known monuments to Pope John Paul II. Uh, it's in a really nice area of the park. Again, as yesterday, a number of tributes because this is the, uh, this is the time that he passed away. I think this is a particularly a good monument because this one this one really captures the look of him i think uh, and it's nice just surrounded by the park area it's got its own dedicated sort of little piece of land and all around the outside and inside there's different tributes to him so it's a it's quite a nice place so here we are now on the final stop of our john paul ii tour in krakow and this building behind me, or this series of buildings, is the John Paul II Center. Uh, I don't know whether it's because of the pandemic or because everything seems to be closed in the city on Easter Saturday, but it's really, really quiet, really quiet around here. Everything is pretty much shut. 
This is the chapel. I hope the chapel is not shut. Easter Sunday service tomorrow. Pretty good place to come. This is one of the most um, important parts of the whole center. This, these are the robes he was wearing when the assassination attempt was made on him. May 1981. This is in the mid chapel. You come and see it. It's, by the, it's on the upstairs of the chapel. And here we are on the outside of the center. It has this beautiful tower with a glassed room up the top. And then this is another entrance to the chapel. A huge glassed. In homage. John Paul II. This is a great statue. We've seen a few monuments to him in the last couple of days, but this is this is maybe the best one of them all. Really does has the look of him. And just a couple of candles here. I'm surprised there's not more. We've seen a lot of flowers and candles at the base of the different statues, but just a couple. But look how quiet and serene this place is. And this is the uh, John Paul II Center. And we just went in the chapel. It's the only place that's open at the moment. And it's an amazing chapel. Uh, mosaics of John Paul II on each side of the chapel. And there's like an inner chapel. And then on the outside, there's multiple small chapels, each with a different theme. So quite an interesting, quite an interesting place to go. We didn't film so much. A lot of it is in the dark at the moment. And then a lot of people are praying in there. So wanted to be respectful but we took some pictures but this is right in the center of the cent uh, this is right in the center spot of the John Paul II center there are multiple buildings the chapel behind us there's the museum and then a, a bigger building here so when everything is open here, you really could spend quite a lot of time. But it seems like a very, a very, very good place and quite fitting for a Pope of his stature. I've enjoyed this weekend making this, uh, this vlog of Pope John Paul II in Krakow. And uh, this seems like a, a fitting time and fitting place to to end it for now.